if we were to ask you about the uh, something that isn't really discussed at length when uh, people do discuss the wonderful work that you've done, and that is uh, the restoration project that you undertook, uh, or the rather the excavation project that you undertook of the Buddhist stupas in Kesariya built by Emperor Ashok and the rock cut caves in Malapuram and Calicut. So what should, what would you like to tell our viewers about that wonderful uh, task that you had initiated? Uh, uh, this one, Kesariya Stupa, uh, it was completely covered with mud and there were many trees growing over that one. So, and that is the first Stupa that is known as Terrastu Stupa. But we did not know it was Terrastu Stupa because it was fully covered with mud for thousands and thousands of years. Uh, for many centuries, and then it was overgrown with a number of trees also. But when we excavated, it was known that it's a stupa, because, you know, Buddha, when he started from Vaishali, because he was on his last journey, he started from uh, this one, from uh, Rajgir, came to Patliputra, from Patliputra, he crossed Ganga River, went to Vaishali, and when he reached Vaishali, there there was a sermon in which he said that he is, I mean, it is the la, for the last time that he is looking towards Vaishali. Idam Pachimagam Ananda Vaishali Dishyanam Bhavishyati. And here after, I will not look towards Vaishali. That is what he said. And he has predicted about his impending death also three months before that one. So the people also of Vaishali also, I mean, they were emotionally charged and they said that if you are going from this city, we will also follow you. So they followed, but Lord Buddha said, please don't come behind me. But they followed him almost for 50 kilometers. And uh, when he reached that Kesariya, he said, no, hereafter you will not. And he handed over his begging bowl to the people of Vaishali. So there, a small stupa, mud stupa was built. But during the Ashogan period, it became a brick stupa. And then during the Gupta period, it became a terrace stupa. One, two, three, four, five. So it was this terrace stupa which gave inspiration for the great Maha stupa, that is Barabadur stupa in Indonesia. Because students had come from various parts of the world to study at Nalanda University. Nalanda, of course, we had Tachashila, but Tachashila was a smaller university. Nalanda, even in 3rd century, 4th century, 5th century BC, it was an international university. And just think that Oxford University, I mean, the first modern university is Paris University. We also call it Strasbourg University. That was in 12th century. And then you have Oxford University in 13th century. Then Cambridge University, that is also 13, I mean, roughly in 13, between 13 and 15th century. 700 years before, 800 years before, you had a bigger university in India where students came not only, not only from in, I mean, Indian subcontinents. Indian subcontinent means, I mean, the whole India, Pakistan, Bangladesh, Afghanistan, Nepal, not only from here, you had a number of students from China, from Japan, because Huyang Chang himself was a student here. He studied for two years in this university, and then he became a teacher also in this great university. And similarly, from a number of universities, from a number of countries from this one, that is Indonesia, Malaysia, and uh, this one, I mean, uh, Sri Lanka, Thailand, students were there then. And the king of Sumatra, he donated four villages for the library of uh, Nalanda University. And Nalanda University library was nine-story library at that time. It is such a thing. So when you walk over the mounds of Nalanda, or even on the soil of Nalanda, you should remember that you are walking on the footsteps of that Huang Chang who had walked over this place 
seven, I mean, many I, in seven century B, seven century AD. So this is that one. Once you put up uh, this one tongue in each and every brick of Nalanda, that will tell you a thrilling story of those period. So that we should be able to evoke that kind of uh, this one feeling, and we should be able to put a tongue also in each and every brick of the university. So this was one of those excavations. And then I excavated another one in Rajgir. That, that was a Rajgir stupa. It was still older because you know, there the relics of Lord Buddha that was also enshrined because the uh, relics of Lord Buddha after his death, it was divided into eight portion. The bigger portion had come to Rajgir because at that time, Ajada Shatru was the most important king of uh, this one, Magadha. So the major portion came here. That was enshrined in a stupa. But where was this stupa? Nobody knew. People had identified various places. But then I could identify a mount. I excavated and we got certain part of that relic casket also. It was, of course, earlier taken, the relics were taken by uh, smugglers. That was long, long back, just after perhaps uh, Ashoka. But we could get a part of that relic, relic casket. So that was the importance of it. So similarly, so many things, you know, Bihar is a wonderful land. It is full of every second stone is a monument. It is pregnant with history. And you should be able to unravel that history. Namaste. We hope you enjoyed this Chitti Media content. Please remember to subscribe to us and switch on the notifications for this channel. For our other social media links, more content and to support our work, please visit citti.net. Dhanavad. Namaskar. <laughs>